Mike Pacelli here. Thanks for tuning us in. For this lesson, I'm going to talk about what's probably the most important Beatles song as far as us here in America is, in, is concerned, um, I Want to Hold Your Hand. The Beatles recorded it in, uh, I believe it was October of 63. And fun facts to know and tell, they had already had many hits in the UK. They had recorded She Loves You and um, uh, I Saw Her Standing There, Please Please Me. They had all these great hits in the UK, but the, the, on EMI Records, their American counterpart, Capitol Records, didn't see fit to release any of those songs in America. So the Beatles manager, Brian Epstein, he was, he was you know, one of them to have a hit record before they would go to America. So he basically told the lads, you got to sit down and try to write a hit for the American audience. Well, Paul McCartney was staying at Jane Asher's house, um, and in the basement of Jane Asher's house in London, her parents' house, John and Paul got together eye to eye, nose to nose, and they wrote, I want to hold your hand, specifically for the American audience. Um, that song, when it finally creeped its way into America, there had been two previous releases uh, under, underground in America, one on Swan and the other on VJ labels. But when Capitol finally released, I want to hold your hand, that started the British invasion. So I think it's one of the most important Beatles songs, and uh, I want to go through every nuance of that song so you, so you can have it under your belt. And I think it's a must-learn for uh, um, all Beatle fans. So check it out. John's rhythm part on I Want to Hold Your Hand is just fantastic, and I think without it, uh, the song might not have been a hit. It's very inventive, and uh, he was playing a Rickenbacker 325, similar to this one, so I'll be using this to try to get the authentic sound. Uh, truth be told, it's a short scale, and with, for a person with gigantic hands like myself, it's kind of a pain in the butt to play it, especially to try to get John's banjo chords, but nevertheless, I'll, uh, I'll plow through it. And I'm using a 1963 Vox AC30 to try to get the, the closest uh, tone we can to the song. So it, it starts on the and of three. You count one, two, three, and you play and four and, and it's a power C chord to a power D. So one, two, three. And notice on the and of four, he hits the C and slides up into the power D. So one, two, three. And then we're going to, he does a little different live, but I'm going to talk about how he played it on the record. Um, he really power D's it and hits it hard. So one, two, three. And then on the third time, he rock and rolls it with the Chuck Berry, you know, going from the fifth to the sixth. And he really hits the six. So again, slow. One, two, three. We're talking about 1963, October. That's very inventive and very powerful for a, for a rock quartet. So that's the intro. Um, now he goes in, it's in the key of G, so he plays a G. And when he's playing on the G, he rock and rolls it, like Chuck Berry again, from the fifth of G, which is a D, up to the E. Oh yeah. Now, the rhythm pattern that he's playing, when you see him live, he's just going to continue eighth notes for the most part. Except when George plays a lick, he kind of mirrors that, which I'll show you later. But um, on the record, the rhythm is like this. So it's one and, and he's rocking it. One, two, three. And then he's moving to the D chord. Now he does it very loose, but that's the basic rhythm. And again, there'll be charts and tabs at MikePacelli.com if you want the clearest picture of what I'm talking about. So he's like this on the G. Got that? Just very cool. Then it goes up to an E minor. Now, in the E minor is the first time they really kind of really play kind of staccato like. And then he goes to a B chord. So again, it's like on the verse. Back to the G. They just play the B and hold it, right? So that's a verse. Mm -hmm. 
Now when you get to the, I want to hold your hand, it's C to a D, and he plays it his banjo way, with like a regular D chord, the way us normal humans play it. Puts his pinky on the F sharp on the D string, which for me, it's very hard to grab it because my hands are so big. So you may see me grab it like this. Um, you can see the, uh, the, the block chord diagram over my shoulder. But John plays them always like this, the banjo chord style. So he goes from a C to this D, G, bar G, E minor, C, D, and he rocks the G. So that part is. So the, let me do a verse into that uh, pre-chorus. Uh. Second verse, same as the first. Um, when it gets to the, the middle eight, it's D minor, regular D minor the first time. And it's funny because it seems like he has the perfect uh, situation to play this G chord with the open strings, but he stays with the bar chord. He goes D minor and just kind of lightly strum. And when I G, uh, C, A minor. Now the second time he plays a D minor with an F in the bass. This chord. And then he slides up to um, a, a G6, really. Same form. D minor, G6. C. And then I can't hide. It's C to D. This is where his banjo chord voicing comes in handy because he goes C, D, and he, and he rocks it with the pinky. That's basically all the parts. All right, let me do a whole verse into the into uh, into the middle eight. So we got. I'll do it from the beginning. One, two, three. basically all of John's parts, except at the very end, the little tacit, I want to hold you. Uh, let's see. B7. Right? And then C. Got it? All right, I'll just do a close-up of just the left hand so you can check out the chords and then uh, we'll move on.
So George has some really cool parts on I Want to Hold Your Hand. He plays a, a Gretsch country gentleman. This is a, a Gretsch country classic, only different it doesn't have those mutes, which are kind of useless anyhow. Um, and again, I'm still playing through the 1963 Vox AC30. So when the song starts, George plays, on, when John's doing the C to D, George plays a line like this. So that's E, G, D. And then he bends up like, you know, he's thinking about a G bend, probably like. He bends that C up to, almost up to D, but he's kind of all a little flat. You have to listen really carefully to see he does get up to the D, but he barely does. So. It's so sweet. All right, and during the verse, oh yeah, he's playing a G, a G bar chord up here on the 10th fret. And, and if you want to play it like George, George uses his pinky. And it's kind of like a, you know, he's very playful on the G chord. Down to D. And then he bends a note. He bends uh, this E up to an F sharp, and he, and he releases it. Actually, it starts on the F sharp, so bent up. Right? Oh, yeah. And he plays, which is E to B. So again. Right? Second time, G again. D. Now the chord is B, they're holding a B, and George does a unison B. And uh, again, when you see people uh, playing this, they usually go from the third fret, the A, and bend that all the way up to the B and get the open B string like. But back in those days, they were pa playing pyramid guitar strings, and they were very thick strings. And I think, to my ear, George is going from the B flat to the B, and just kind of like a. And then he releases that, plays a G, and the an E of the C chord. So second part. All right, and there's the C chord. I wanna hold E minor, C, D, and up to G again. All right, let me do that again. Verse. You got it? Now, um, on the bridge, while John is doing all those cool chords, uh, uh, George is kind of arpeggiating the same chords. He starts on the D minor, and he plays like this is, and when I touch you, he goes, like the, the, uh, a D minor chord, but just playing the notes on the uh, fourth, third, and second string. So the D minor, he plays a straight G, and then a C, starting on the fourth string, then A minor. Now the second time he plays the D minor, he goes all the way up to the first string. Then the G, straight G, and this time it's against John's G6. John is playing this chord, while George is going. And that's C again. And then on the C to D, he's playing C, E, D. And bending, like, even though it's a D, he's playing in the G form for the bend. Something like that, you know? So on. Back up to the, the G bar chord. D. And again, on, there's an overdub of second time, D. D, E minor. Now the only difference in George's part is at the very end when, when he goes to the B, you know. On the B, B7, George plays. Just a kind of a Chuck Berry lick. So it's just uh, seventh fret, I'm sorry, ninth fret of the third string bent up. Then seventh of, of two and one. It's nine, seven, 
seven of the third string to nine of the fourth string. So on the B. And then the end. And George plays an open chord. All right. C, E, D, C, E, D. Again, there's charts and tabs at MikePacelli.com if I, if I went a little too fast. Now, when you see him play a live, uh, he doesn't play all those lines, pretty much. You'll see him on, on, on the live version, he just plays G. And then he goes... Like that. But on the record, he does all those cool little licks. All right, now for fun, I'll just put it all together, and uh, you can use it as a reference. And that's how you play I Want to Hold Your Hand by the Beatles. Hey, I hope you enjoyed it. There's charts and tabs at MikePacelli.com. And please uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. So until next time, I'm Mike Pacelli, and thanks for hanging out with me.